Hi there, this is Thermal Physics Lesson 1, and this is Thermal Energy. Thermal energy is the energy of an object due to its temperature. It's also known as internal energy. This is covered at GCSE. So what is internal energy? Internal energy is equal to the sum of the random distribution of the kinetic and potential energies of the object's molecules. Molecular kinetic energy, of course, increases with temperature. And the potential energy increases if an object changes state from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. So we get an increase in kinetic energy with temperature. As, as uh, atoms or molecules get hotter, they vibrate or move more rapidly. Therefore, the kinetic energy increases. And the uh, when we undergo a, a phase change the potential energy will increase or decrease. It increases if it's, say, solid to liquid, liquid to gas, and decrease if it's gas to liquid, liquid to solid. That should be a, a recap from GCC. So some more definitions. So temperature. Remember to pause at any point if you want to make any notes. Temperature is a measure of the degree of hotness of a substance. And heat energy normally moves from regions of higher to lower temperature. And finally, two objects are said to be in thermal equilibrium with each other if there is not a net transfer of heat energy between them. And this, of course, will only occur if both objects are at the same temperature. Let's move on. Absolute zero, so you may already know what this is. Absolute zero is the, the lowest possible temperature in the entire universe. So an object has an object at absolute zero has minimum internal energy. So there's a graph on the right. The graph opposite shows that the pressure of all gases will fall to zero at absolute zero. So absolute zero has never actually been hit uh, by scientists. We get just above absolute zero. However, we know what absolute zero is because we can plot points of pressure against temperature and keep plotting points and then feed back a line of best fit, extrapolate it out. And this is the lowest point. Well, it's actually minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And of course, that's equal to zero Kelvin. Temperature scales. A temperature scale is defined by two fixed points, which are standard degrees of hotness that can be accurately reproduced. Celsius scale. Symbol, theta, Greek letter. Unit, degrees Celsius. So some fixed points on the Celsius scale, which you'll be aware of. Ice point, zero degrees Celsius. That's the temperature of pure melting ice. Steam point, 100 degrees Celsius. And that is the temperature at which pure water boils at standard atmospheric pressure. Standard atmospheric pressure is approximately 101 kilopascals of pressure. Remember, if you need to take any more, just pause. Let's move on. So absolute scale. So symbol T. Unit is Kelvin. So some fixed points. Absolute zero. Zero Kelvin is the lowest possible temperature in the universe. And it's equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Triple point of water, which you may be aware of, may not. So just above zero degrees Celsius, or 273.16 Kelvin, the temperature which pure water exists is in thermal equilibrium with ice and water vapour. 
hence the name the triple point of water. And it's equal to 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. Remember, this is for pure water. So we're going to move on, do a couple of questions, some conversions between the absolute scale and the Celsius scale. So I want you to complete this table. So if you want to write your answers down on a sheet of paper. And I want you to use 273 rather than 273.15. So I'll take through the answers. So boiling water, if that's 100 degrees Celsius, that'd be 373 Kelvin. Vostok, Antarctica, 1983, I believe is the coldest temperature ever recorded in nature, will be 184 Kelvin. The average Earth surface temperature, 288 Kelvin, or 15 degrees Celsius. A gas flame of 1500 degrees Celsius is 1773 Kelvin. And the sun's surface is 6,000 Kelvin, which is 5,727 degrees Celsius. Of course, as you move towards the center of the sun, the temperature increases drastically until it approximately reaches around 15 million degrees towards the center. So specific heat capacity, this should be a recap from year 10. So let's have a look. So first of all, definition, the specific heat capacity C of a substance is the energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of substance by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius without a change of state. So if you want to write that down, please do. Remember to pause at any point. So there's the equation. Delta Q equals MC delta T. So delta Q is the heat energy required in joules. M is the mass of the substance in kilograms. C is the specific heat capacity. And specific heat capacity is measured in joules per kilogram per, de uh, per degree Celsius or joules per kilogram per Kelvin. An incremental change of one Kelvin is the exact same as a change of one degree Celsius. Delta T is the change in temperature in Kelvin or in degree Celsius. You could have also been given this equation as E equals MC theta, E being energy instead of Q, M and C being the same mass and specific heat capacity, and theta meaning change in temperature. Remember, change in temperature could be in degrees Celsius or Kelvin, and specific heat capacity is in joules per kilogram per Kelvin or joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So here's some examples of specific heat capacity. You can pause and just have a read. Now what I've done is highlighted water and, and copper. So what I would like you to do is to write this on a sheet of paper because we're going to do some, some example questions where we need to know the, the specific values for these two, for the specific heat capacity. So what I'd like to do is to pause and complete this table. Please be very careful with the units, especially milligrams or grams. And with this one, we've got degrees Celsius and Kelvin on the same scale. So you want to pause and have a go. And then I'll show you the answers afterwards. So the first one, 840,000 joules. Second one, the gold, temperature change of 50 degrees Celsius. You could have said 50 Kelvin, that's fine as well, because it's a temperature change. Air has a specific heat capacity of 1,000 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Glass, 3 kilos of mass. The next one, remember, uh, for hydrogen, 5 grams, if you, if you get this wrong, this is, 5 grams would be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilos. We've got five milligrams. So five milligrams is actually five times 10 to the minus six kilograms. So this is a common mistake to make, converting this incorrectly. 
but let's see how you get on. So hydrogen, you should get 28.6 joules of energy. And brass to finish off, 423 Kelvin. Hopefully that all went okay. Let's move on, see what's next. And actually, by seeing what's next, I mean the end of the lesson. I've just realised that if we carry on with some more example questions, this video will run for quite a while. So I'm going to put it in a second video. So lesson two will be more example questions on specific heat capacity and the energy equals MC theory equation. So be careful with units, especially if you give a masses in milligrams. So it's 10 to, uh, times 10 to the minus 3 for the grams and then another times 10 to the minus 3 for the milli. And be careful when converting between degrees Celsius and Kelvin. So thanks for watching. I hope that helped. And I'll speak to you soon.